No doubt there are times when you think to yourself, I'm going to go to that meeting tomorrow and I'm going to get my point across in a way that either inspires, empowers, or motivates those present to take action. You know the feeling I'm talking about. Essentially, you're wanting to influence others in some way or another. Influencing others is a valuable skill, one that I have years of experience in, just by the very nature of being a consultant. This is because I generally have little authority in my client's business, but I have a great deal of influence, or I can have. But how well I use my influence will determine how big of a change or impact that I'm able to make in their business. And spoiler alert, I always aim to make a sizable, valuable impact or why bother doing what I'm doing at all? So today I'm going to give you two takeaways from Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, that for many of you will be a game changer in how you can influence others to take action. Welcome back. I'm Samantha McGorick and you are watching the No WTA Show, where I help board members and executives like yourself know what to ask and when to act so that you can lead with your heart and put people first by leading safe and healthy work. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out. There's no disputing that by the very nature of your leadership role, you carry a great deal of influence in the business. But when it comes to influencing others, do you aspire to be more influential? Write aspire in the comments below right now if you aspire to have more influence without the use of your job title. One of the challenges that I personally face on a regular basis is breaking down the paradigm that bringing heart into the workplace is soft and weak and that a focus on safety will inherently undermine productivity and profitability. However, there is plenty of research that supports the position that organizations thrive when they put their people first and accept that both feelings and emotions play an enormous role in driving human or employee behavior. But that's a topic for another video. My point is, I need to be able to influence people like yourselves to think differently. And you too need to be able to influence others without using the power and authority associated with your job title as the means of influence because that influence is superficial. And with that, the change you're, you're wanting to make will likely not stick over time. People may follow your instruction, but if you rely on your position to get others to take action, you'll never really know if they're doing it because they're told to or because that they can see it's the right thing to do. So whether that's getting your peers to appreciate and endorse an idea you have, or maybe you need to influence community members or shareholders, in terms of a position that the company is looking to take or an operational change your company wants to make. The most effective way that I influence others through interpersonal leadership is by applying Stephen Covey's habit number four of the seven habits, thinking win-win. This is a powerful mindset where success is when all parties involved in the process achieve mutually beneficial results. The thinking win-win paradigm builds tremendous trust between all parties involved and will be a game changer in your leadership because as you increase trust, you will have more influence. Okay, so let's dive into two takeaways from Stephen Covey's paradigm, thinking win-win, that will improve your influence with others. Key takeaway number one, a strong character is the foundation of thinking win-win. Our character is the means to building trust. And as I just mentioned, if you have trust, you are in a position of influence. So how do you build character? Well, Covey suggests you focus on three traits, integrity, maturity, and an abundance mentality. Integrity is the value we place on ourselves. Once we clearly identify our values and proactively prioritize and execute around those values on a daily basis, we develop self-awareness and the capacity to act on principle rather than reacting to emotions or circumstances. And by doing so, we make and keep meaningful promises and commitments, and this builds trust. If we apply this to health and safety leadership, you would start with identifying your values around how people should be treated at work. When you truly believe that no one should get hurt at work and you are committed to ways that you can make that possible, you develop the independent will 
to transcend the paradigms that resist or restrict us from thinking outside the box in terms of how we can do that work better or safer. You transcend the paradigm that safety is a cost to the business or the paradigm, and wait for it, this one is deep rooted. I can do everything I can, but when it comes down to it, people are gonna make their own decisions on the day. And how can I really prevent that? When you define your values, you will make decisions based on your principles rather than anyone else or even your inner voice telling you that it's not possible or any other excuses that you're given. The second character trait is maturity and it is the balance between courage and consideration. Now this trait allows you to listen to the ideas of others, share your ideas and modify your ideas as you obtain feedback. If you're high on courage and low on consideration, you will think win-lose. You win, they lose. Another paradigm of human interaction that Covey elaborates on in his book. You'll be strong and ego-bound. You'll have the courage of your convictions, but you won't be very considerate of others. And in the long run, that will erode trust and your personal integrity, and you'll have much lower influence. But on the other hand, if you're high on courage, consideration and low on courage, you'll be thinking lose-win. You lose, they win. This is where you'll be too considerate of others' convictions and desires that you won't have the courage to express and actualize your own. And again, you'll have very low influence. However, to be high on courage and high on consideration is the balance that is the mark of real maturity. If, I have, if I'm considerate, I can listen, I can empathetically understand, but I can also courageously confront. And both are important when you're thinking about win-win. And both are important to building trust and integrity. As an example, when you lead from your heart and put people first, you may come up against resistance in your business or externally. But if you're principle-centered, like you have defined the values that you want to lead by, you'll have the courage to stand up for your convictions, but you can balance that with consideration for others who may not share your views. And we'll talk more about how you can influence those people under key takeaway number two. But the third character trait, essential to thinking win-win, is the abundance mentality. And this is a mindset in which you believe there is plenty of power for everyone, and you seek solutions that are mutually beneficial to everyone involved. Covey suggests that most people are deeply scripted in scarcity mentality. They see life as having only so much, as though there is only one pie out there. And if someone were to get a big piece of that pie, it would mean less for everybody else. It's difficult for people with scarcity mentality to be members of a complementary team, or for them to see that being interdependent will bring bigger results and impact for everyone. They look at differences and signs of subordination as disloyalty. These people surround themselves with yes people, people who won't challenge them, people who are weaker than they are. In a health and safety context, you may see scarcity mentality play out through bullying or harassment in your business. But an example of applying the abundance mentality to health and safety leadership is that we all benefit when we're learning from others as to what works, what doesn't work. That means collaboration. Whether that's between business units or companies under the same corporate banner or externally with companies in our industry. We do not have scarcity mentality when it comes to leading safe and healthy work. If one business is doing well and is providing a safe and healthy workplace, it's really winning at that, it's not at the expense of another business. There is plenty that we are yet to learn and in a collaborative approach will provide safer and healthy workplaces for everyone. Key takeaway number two, trust will build and maintain win-win relationships. Now we've just seen that in order to have a strong character, we need integrity, maturity, and an abundance mentality. And when we have a strong character, we build trust. So how does trust build and maintain win-win relationships? And how do win-win relationships help us with influencing others? Well, would you agree that where trust is high, credibility is not an issue? Write yes in the comments below right now, if you can agree with that statement. Therefore, we can assume that where both parties have credibility, there will be an inherent level of trust. And when we have trust and we believe in the paradigm, 
win-win, like both of us are going to benefit somehow from this interaction, both parties are therefore open to laying their cards on the table when they're presenting their position. Even if they see things differently, each party knows and trusts that the other, that their opinion will be respected and heard. And this trust and respect will build win-win relationships between both parties. And when we have win-win relationships, both parties will stay committed to understanding each other's position or they stay longer in the negotiation process to come up with a real win-win solution. And this strengthens and maintains win-win relationships. Now it must seem self-evident at this point, but when we have a strong win-win relationship, we have our greatest level of influence because the other party is listening with an open mind to legitimately hear your position. They trust that you'll hear their position and they know that you seek a win-win outcome. I mean, there will be times, however, when you're dealing with a person who is coming in from a win-lose. They win, you lose. When this is the case, your relationship with that person is key to a win-win outcome and for you to have influence. The place to focus here is on creating trust through genuine courtesy, respect and appreciation for that person and for their point of view. Stay longer in the communication process. Listen more, listen in greater depth. Express yourself with greater courage, but don't be reactive to their behavior. Go deeper inside yourself for strength of character, to be proactive and stay true to your values and what is the best and right outcome for all parties. Stay in the process until the other party begins to realize that you genuinely want a resolution to be a real win-win for both of you. And that very process is a tremendous deposit in building trust. And as I've said a few times, high trust, high influence. Win-win starts inside of you from a character of integrity, maturity, and an abundance mentality. And it grows and prospers out of high trust relationships. Thinking win-win is how you strengthen your influence and it's where you move from transactional leadership to transformational leadership because you transform the individuals involved as well as the relationship. One of the foundational principles of leading safe and healthy work is sharing knowledge across business, industry, and borders. In this way, we can share with each other what works, what hasn't worked, and not be ashamed or embarrassed of that because we're talking about people's lives and that's pretty important. So in the context of sharing, let this community know what actions or behaviors are you going to take away and implement that will help you have a greater influence. As always, I hope this has helped you in your quest to know what to ask and when to act. If you like this video, do let me know by clicking the thumbs up icon below, but more importantly, if you think that others would value or get similar value from this content, please share it with them. If you want more videos like this, Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified when I post a new video every Wednesday. If you want more great insights into what to ask and when to act, plus personal insights that I just can't put in video, come on over to samanthamagalric.com and sign up to get email updates and I'd love to have you on board. Be brave and stay true to a commitment to lead from your heart by putting people first and I'm confident you will reap the rewards. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.